Hey everybody, it is still August 1, 2021. Sky News, Australia, suspended by YouTube. You wanna know why? Because of COVID-19 misinformation. Big mainstream media, conservative news, right? My Aussie subs. Sky News Australia is a conservative. Well, I, I've heard Sky News enough to know that it sure ain't leftist. But, um, yeah, Sky News cannot post for a week. It's been punished by YouTube for this misinformation that Sky News says, well, we never said what you claim we said, which was specifically we don't allow content that denies the existence of COVID-19 or that encourages people to use hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin to treat or prevent the virus. We do, we do allow for videos that have sufficient countervailing context, which the violative uh, videos did not provide. Sky News said that it didn't do that, but it doesn't matter. Um, the censorship, look, they've censored a president of the United States. They've censored Republican politicians. They've censored pretty much everything that they don't want out, the truth regarding the election, regarding uh, COVID-19. So here we are. I don't like what the world has turned into, uh, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, NHS UK made secret plan to deny care to elderly in event of pandemic. Thousands of pensions, pensioners died as COVID spread through care homes. Elderly people in their 70s faced being denied. I close that. Face being denied a hospital bed under this plan that was designed in 2017. This secret NHS England document proposed treating patients on their chances of survival rather than clinical need. A uh, strategy was designed 2017 to ensure the health service would cope in the event of a severe flu pandemic well, you can read on, but yeah, the elderly got to prioritize, okay? Um, elderly, too bad for you. This is scary. I don't drink, but I sure do know what happens when people can't get their alcohol. Is a liquor shortage looming? especially in states like Michigan, North Carolina, South Carolina, Illinois, and Ohio. Could be. We've got a lot of shortages looming. But, oof, that just adds to the nightmare. All right, I, I you know, came across an article, and it was about this interview. This is the CDC director, Rochelle Walensky, Brett Beyer, um, and it's a 20-minute interview, which so many of the questions, look, politicians, uh, government officials have given up answering questions. Listen to this. And on this 20-minute um, interview, he has two people uh, that, just ordinary people, asking 
questions to the CDC director. Listen to this man's question. Listen to her answer. Why is the CDC not looking at the emotional impacts and the other physical impacts that having a mask on a child as young as three or four, five, six, seven years old? Nobody seems to be talking about the emotional or physical impacts um, that, that having a mask on a child for that long is having, and the CDC should be looking at this. Why are they not? Are you not, or are you? Brett, thank you for that question. Josh, thank you for that question. Here's what I can tell you. First of all, I have three kids myself, and I completely understand. We want our kids back in school, and that is so very important. Over the summer, we've had numerous summer school outbreaks that have occurred when uh, masks are not worn. We've had, uh, jurisdictions have had to close schools because there are so many clusters happening in the school system. So my primary goal is to get all our kids back in person safely for full-time learning um, and to do so and to be able to keep the schools open to prevent those clusters from happening in school. Right now the best way to do that is to have everybody masked because we do have disease in the community and hopefully as we have vaccinations for kids and less disease in the community we'll be able to, uh, to scale back on the mask wearing. But those are cases, right? Those aren't hospitalizations and those aren't deaths. You have a percentage of kids, young kids, hospitalizations and deaths? Um, you know, we are following that very carefully. What I will say is that um, certainly the kids do better than adults do. Um, the older people, the, the more hospitalizations have occurred in demographics that are over the age of 65. Um, but we are seeing illness in some kids who get, um, who get uh, COVID and it's illness at the rates or even higher than the rates of influenza. So in my mind as a vaccine preventable disease, we want to make sure that our kids stay in school wearing a mask and then when the vaccines, should the vaccines become available for our children to vaccinate them to keep them safe and healthy. All right, here's what. Did she answer the question? This man was asking if the CDC is looking into the emotional impact as well as the physical impact of children as young as three years old wearing a mask. Did she answer that question at all? No. And Brett, it was your job to make sure she answers the question. Well, she didn't. Okay. Um, so much goes through my head and I can't say it on YouTube. You know, she also talks about what's happening at the southern border. Oh, by the way, she also says that the vaccine will prevent hospitalization, and death, severe illness with the vaccinated, and this is against the Delta variant. And do you know that I'm like, they're talking about the Delta variant, and I feel like we're on another variant. Didn't we get to another variant? Isn't it called something? Is it Delta? Okay, I, I'm lost. But that's what she says. And then, you know, he shows at the very beginning 6,239 hospitalizations and deaths, breakthrough deaths, 1,263. Okay, yeah, it's a small percentage of those vaccinated but are you going to line up and play Russian roulette? Look, 1,263, that's a lot of people. 6,239, that's a lot of people. So when you are, you know, dealing with the percentages, you're like, oh, okay, well, it's so, so rare. You know, nothing's going to happen to me. You don't know that. Okay. Well, she also talked about 
or, or he asked about, you know, the southern border, the surge. And last week it was 20,000 who crossed the southern border. They have been claiming that many of them have COVID. Many of them are being sent all over the country. So if this is so, so, you know, she says, my job is to protect the American people. All right, well, then make your recommendations and let Americans decide for themselves. She doesn't really answer the question at all. In fact, let me just read it because, it, I mean, she was also asked about the adverse effects of the vaccines. And this is the latest. Okay, from this. Remember, was it the swine flu? We had the swine flu vaccine and there were what, 53 deaths and the vaccine was taken off the market? YouTube, you cannot claim that this is misinformation since it comes from the CDC. It comes from the VAERS uh, reporting system on the CDC's website. And you can see it right here. So if this gets taken down, you know it's not about misinformation. It's about preventing the truth from getting out there. So, okay, well, yeah, everybody's, you know, it's on a number of websites. We are now releasing COVID positive illegal immigrants into the U.S. And um, so, yeah, please tell me we need to mask up, social distance, and get vaccinated. Um, what will Lenski say? So this was the question. Brett said, but do you know the surge, how the surge of illegal immigrants with COVID is affecting the overall rate? You know, it sounds like the percentages down there on the border are astronomical. Walensky, yeah, you know, I would say that the percentages in the southern part of this country are really quite high. She's talking about the southern states. I don't necessarily think we can attribute all of that to what's going on at the southern border. You don't think? You mean you don't have CDC officials down there who are making sure that it can't be attributed to these numbers that you're putting out, requiring uh, masking up and children to mask in school. You haven't looked into this. You're just going to put out an answer with, I don't necessarily think. Uh, and we're following the science. I think what we really need to do is spend our time getting our communities vaccinated, to getting our individuals vaccinated, to prevent disease from transmitting in our communities. Okay, this pandemic is preventing people from coming into this country, from European uh, countries, We've got travel restrictions. We're looking at another lockdown, which our president said uh, there's a probability. Mask up, everybody. And a whole lot more. Don't you think the border needs to be closed? I, it, they don't do it. They're just allowing people to cross. 
and Americans are just sitting back doing nothing about this? Ten Republicans back bill calling for audit of the CDC. I would say it's late, but good. Will it happen? We don't know. A group of 10 Republican senators is backing a bill that would requ require an audit of the decision-making and public health messaging by the CDC. This has been going on now. What, are we in the 19th month, 18th month? Where are we? I don't know. How many businesses has this destroyed? What happened to the children that were prevented from going to school. What is happening emotionally and physically to these children who have to wear masks? How many non-essentials suddenly are freaking out because they can't pay their bills? Oh, and all of that COVID relief, the American Rescue Plan, not making it to the Americans that need it, instead making it to bankers and corporations, to the people who didn't need it, so we have had massive destruction in just, you know, from the start of the pandemic, and it's going on. Look at all of those people being evicted. Congress can't do anything about that. But we have reporters who have not asked the important questions, like where's the data? Could we see the science? and we can't talk to any other experts? It has to be Fauci and Walensky? That's it? When there are so many, so many experts out there who have looked at enough data to say something's very wrong here. Okay, Americans, maybe you would like to ask a question? Maybe? You would like to support this bill? Maybe an audit is what is needed, the Restore Public Health Institution Trust Act of 2021. It requires the report. The bill requires the report to include a review of the data the CDC used to make its recommendations and whether the agency's inconsistent messaging had an impact on the public's trust and willingness to take the COVID-10 COVID-10? Okay, well, uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccine. These guidelines, like most of the Biden administration's actions these days, make little sense and seem without scientific direction. You know, in this interview, she's talking about uh, what led to now this vaccinated mask up, mask up everybody. Oh my God, schools now. There is a question whether or not they're going to be open. If they are, kids need to wear masks. Lockdown possibly coming. All because of an unpublished report coming out of Provincetown where there were vaccinated people who 74% were vaccinated and but they tested positive okay we need the data okay we need the data the experts independent of the cdc independent of the democratic party independent of fauci we need that data turned over to independent experts to look at. You know, evidence is really very important, especially when you have people in positions to destroy your life because of something. Evidence is really important. So you're listening to mainstream media. You're listening to Fauci or Walensky. And you're going with it. You're just going with it because those are the experts that say this and that's it. Could we 
could we get rid of opinion and start being a a people that actually think again, critically think again, and a people that want to look at the facts and evidence? Could we? Is it possible? No, what we have to do is vaccinate everybody. Just let those illegals come across the border. And yes, I will continue calling them as such because they are illegally coming in to the United States. And we've had so many who have come legally and they've gone through the process. And it's a slap in the face to them. So we'll see where this goes. I mean, it should be pushed for by the American people. The Americans, hey, Americans, you get to ask questions too, okay? And if we could unite and demand, demand the evidence, that would be sweet. Relentless, relentless. My daughter works at, as a traveling nurse and is currently at a hospital in South Florida. Now, they created two COVID floors and it's total BS. She said they are putting any Tom, Dick, Harry there regardless of their illness and calling it COVID. Oh my God, it's a repeat. Don't, I hate repeats. I hate repeats. We're, we're <clears throat> that's all life has become, just a repeat. Just a repeat. You know how much hospitals get when, oh, you put down a diagnose of COVID-19? Money, 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 money. And it's a great way to inflate the numbers, but a great way to bring in revenue. Walmart, Disney. This is how they're going about the mandate. Walmart now requiring the COVID vaccine for all corporate employees. Disney now requiring it for all of its salaried and non-union hourly employees. Publix and Walmart are now requiring all employees, regardless of vaccination status, to get back in their masks. Curse be these companies for believing anything that the CDC says about the coronavirus, the Delta variant, masks, and the vaccine. Why did I think it? Suddenly hearing Delta, it just didn't sound right. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> when will the COVID revolt come, Americans? The French are back out on the street today. Massive, 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 massive amounts of people, Germany. When will the COVID revolt come? At some point, there will be a revolt. The longer the arbitrary insanity persists, the more violent the reaction will be. I don't know about that, Roger. Uh, here, this is a quote. <clears throat> There is a great deal of pent-up frustration and resentment over the inconvenience, the loss of freedom, and the general climate of hectoring that the government's pandemic response has created. Okay. New York Post column. Uh, Glenn Reynolds wrote the column. And it's titled, No, Karen, We're Not Masking Again. Well... It is irritating to be lectured by officials who claim to be smarter than you. It's infuriating to be lectured by government officials who claim to be smarter than you, but clearly are not. The on-again, off-again claims on masks and vaccination are just part of it. Tired of masks? Get vaccinated, they told us. Now they're saying wear a mask even if you are vaccinated, and even if you're associating with others who have been vaccinated. And there's talk of more lockdowns, which a growing body of scientific evidence uh, suggests. No, it's proof. 
useless, downright harmful. Well, that's, that's an excerpt from the article. No, Karen, we're not masking again. Well, we're back. Uh, Molly Bloom, uh, who I don't even know who she is, and should I? I don't know. But to return to the question of hope, I am reminded that hope was said by some cynics to have been the last evil in Pandora's pithos. It seems like only yesterday. In fact, it was just this past May that both the president, the vice president, insisted that, as Joe put it, folks, if you're fully vaccinated, you no longer need to wear a mask. Whoops. Okay. Of course, that was more than a year after 15 days to slow the spread. Remember? 15 days to flatten the curve. Fauci's steady stream of contradictory, though authoritatively delivered advice, not to mention the recent advent of, cue the scary music, the Delta variant. It was the New York Post again that cut to the chase on the latest. Unless we're on to the Epsilon variant already, uh, with its cover of July 30. Insanity. This is the cover of the New York Post. Insanity. Read its oversized headline, and below was a large grid with a tiny bit of the upper right square marked of the 161 million people who have been vaccinated. Only 5,601 have been hospitalized with the new version. Uh, 1,141 have died. Uh, that's 0.000%. And how old, one wonders, were those who succumbed and died? Well, the majority have been the elderly. And you know what? The elderly die. They die from the flu. They die from pneumonia. They die. And considering the American people are no longer people who are healthy, our elderly today are not the elderly of yesterday. They have an awful lot of comorbidities. But get, get everybody masked up and vaccinated. But even to talk about studies and statistics and expert advice is to assume that we are talking primarily about an issue of public health. We aren't. Consider this list from Jim Treacher. Absolutely do not wear a mask. You must, you must, must wear a mask. Or you're killing grandma. Don't leave the house. Or you're killing grandma. If you can't avoid leaving the house, stay at least six feet feet away from any other human beings you see or you're killing grandma. Wash your hands 20 times a day. Don't touch your face or anything else ever again. Bleach those products that you buy. Get vaccinated so you don't have to wear a mask. You have to wear a mask even if you're vaccinated. When the above rules change and then change back and then change back again, shut up about it. Don't ask for any evidence. Just Keep obeying your new masters. Yeah, and if you don't, you're a stupid MAGA head. Because it's only the, the, the right-wing extremists, the white supremacists who are not complying. Don't forget to vote Democrat, by the way. Treacher is right. This isn't about science, it's about control. You will do as you're told, peasants, and your moral, ethical, and intellectual betters will continue to do whatever they please. The elite, your government officials, your Whitmers, your Bidens, your Pelosi's, your Newsom's, 
and so many more. Uh, flaunt their own rules. Caught, oops, sorry. But nothing ever happens to them. So clearly, the flaunting of their own rules, oh my God, it's so, it's so deadly. And you got to stay home. You can't, no, you have to stay home and you cannot go to a hair salon. But I'm Nancy Pelosi and I'm going. You can't sit with your family at a restaurant if you have uh, a number bigger than six. But if you're Governor Newsom, hey, you can go to a party, masked, unmasked. Um, look, oh, they clearly didn't, they weren't concerned, okay? They were not concerned about getting this. So something else is happening. It's not about science, it's about control. I think Glenn Reynolds, the uh, journalist who wrote the column or the author who wrote the column in the New York Post, I think Glenn Reynolds is correct that opposing the tyrannous spirit that stands behind the lockdowns, the mask mandates, and the smug, hectoring, politically correct demands for proof of vaccination would be a winning strategy for GOP politicians. Will they adopt it? Most will do so uh, timorously, if at all. That's my prediction. Okay, the matrix, but um, there are so many people, they truly are um, cult members. And that's where the problem lies. We published a book, uh, Encounter Books published a book by Joel Kotkin, Kotkin, The Coming of Neo-Feudalism, A Warning to the Global Middle Class. Oh, so many people have uh, voiced the middle class is getting extinguished. And yet, a whole lot in the middle class don't seem bothered by that. I guess they think it's not going to happen to them. Some people thought um, Kotkin was overstating things with his talk of an increasingly stratified society into which a tiny elite lorded it over an increasingly pauperized and disenfranchised mass. It turns out, though, that if anything, uh, Cockton, and I apologize for mispronunciating his name, uh, he understated that trend because we see it happening. The weaponization of public health dictates their enforcement by a vast and increasingly overbearing cadre of nanny state bureaucrats <clears throat> is simply the latest manifestation of the profoundly anti-democratic spirit that has taken hold in Western societies. It's all about social control. At some point, there will be a revolt. I, mm, I don't know. The longer, well, I read that the arbitrary insanity persists, the more violent the reaction will be. The question is whether we are at or are approaching the point of crisis. We've been in crisis for a very, very long time. Very, very, very long time. Nothing has happened. Will the voters stand for another lockdown? As we approach the 2022 election, lockdowns markedly increase the opportunities for voter fraud. 2020 showed that. That is precisely why the swamp is pre is prepping, prepping us for another go. Um, 
See, uh, much of this, I don't even bring in the politics anymore because all of this is, you know, the diktats from Davos and that kind of elite. Uh, and these people here in both parties are just puppets taking their orders. What we need is, you know, that swamp cleansing that Trump was going to do? <laughs> well, he didn't. Um, the people, the American people, we need to unite. We need to get rid of that swamp because what Trump has shown us is we are the swamp. We need to kind of get out of the swamp and get rid of these people. So, lockdowns, yep. Oh, boy. Let's see if we stand by grumbling uh, impotently or if finally we actually do something. I am not holding my breath. Neither am I. Neither am I. The American people seem to be awash in, let me just take care of me. And then, you know, this divide and conquer, which has been so exceedingly successful. I swear, I just feel like I can't get out of my malignantly narcissistic family. I, I, it's here to stay. And I'm sure those of you who are from those families know exactly what I'm saying. The gaslighting, the manip manipulations, the abuse, the neglect, the, uh, yeah, let's hit them hard next time, really traumatize them. And uh, then you have no, a lot of ordinary Americans going, yay, yay, yay. All right, the links are below. Nothing good is coming, sorry to say. Nothing good is coming. We have sat back way too long. These people are, they are not going to give up their power. <laughs>